Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. So finally this day come, I sold a lot, like it's been more than a year now since I own this nice Nakamichi deck. Uh, I've got it in brand new shape. And since then, uh, as you know, I did quite a few work with the tape transfer to make it work uh, on the specs. And uh, what I mentioned is that this deck was sounding like bolder than other DR1, DR2 I ever I serviced it. Um, then I started compare it with our other decks on the frequency response tapes. And it appears that this deck has like a rise below 400 gears. That gives this like uh, bold and juicy sound. At the same time, like it's it hides high frequencies a little bit, and it's not works on the same level as my best deck, Sony K7, uh, which I just like made fantastic. I never expected it will be so great. Now I want to do the same upgrades I did for Sony to this Nakamichi deck, uh, installing the solid polymer capacitors. And as a result, I want to compare, can this last deck from Nakamichi compete with the last deck from Sony? I know it's not completely fair, this deck has just 105 kilogears bias, when Sony has 200 kilogears. And another big difference is um, playback amplifier. Uh, this deck has a coil to remove bias, and Sony don't have coils. They use sophisticated filter and uh, use an op amps to remove wires, right? So now Sony is uh, top of the top of the top. It keeps the stage. The stage is wide, same, exactly the same as it was on the original source of the Harris music I used. And now I want to check if I can make this guy uh, to produce a similar stage. Right now it doesn't. Older Nakamichi, no way. So stage is not present as an element, even if I'm using the tape recorded on Sony, or if I record tape on Nakamichi, it just disappear on the uh, source mode. Like when you play source, there is no stage. Even if it's really, really sounds nice, juicy, pleasant, but it it's, it's missing stage. All right, so, Let's see, will they compete or not? So uh, let me remove boards and I will start working and show you progress. Then we will tune measure and I will do a battle. I will put this deck with uh, Sony K7. I will do record from the RCA uh, outputs and I will post uh, uh, original sound file so you'd be able to compare yourself all right stay tuned all right as the first thing i remove is the playback amplifier which sits there on the board uh you don't need to remove tape transports just remove the bottom cover and the screw holding this board and you can just pull it from here and what we need to do, we need to do replace these two 10 microfarad capacitors right here, that one and that one. Um, because that's the only capacitor which affects sound on this board. Uh, other capacitors are for power supply and for mm, balancing the low frequencies. So these two capacitors, 330 microfarad, they just like uh, conduct AC voltage and don't conduct DC voltage. All right. Now these two ports here, these are adjustment for uh, 20 kilogears picking. So that's the Nakamichi scene. So they have a rise uh, from 10 kilogears to 20 kilogears, and this is adjustment. All right, so let me work on this board and I'll see you soon. Okay, 
I replaced these two capacitors with 10 microfarad solid polymer from Wurz Electronics. These are a bigger size and we got it 50 volts version. Technically we can install 25 volts here, it will work fine. And uh, what else? I mentioned that uh, there is a significantly expanded range of different values of these capacitors available now for sale. And the price dropped significantly from the two years ago when I just started experiment with these capacitors. Uh, while I was waiting my equipment to heat up, I removed the front panel, uh, removed these two ports, just like unscrew them and disconnect. And that board looks like that. Disconnected this connector, remove it uh, back uh, RCA panel with the board. Now I will remove screws from this board and I would be able to pull it up, start replacing capacitors. There is quite a few. I'm already did show on example of DR1, which capacitors needs to be replaced. But uh, when I complete this board, I will show you one more time. So you would be able to see. Like, so these two guys gone, these four, uh, these two, these two here, uh, all this affects sound and record amplifier. This green two here, uh, this one, two, three, four, I believe here. And we should be good. Not too many, but uh, really, really important. See you in a moment. And pull it out, board looks like that. It's quite easy, just six screws on the stands, bump, and it's available. And we can work with it. Uh, later generation decks are much easier to service than the original Nakamichi's. And like it, it's technically uh, true for the old decks from all manufacturers. The most terrible were decks from 70s and they learned in the 80s and 90s were very well built decks. All right, now let me replace cups and I see you right there. And here I'm back. Um, please take a look. Uh, all capacitors which are sits on the sound pass are replaced. So these two 47 microfarad and these two are in the record uh, uh, amplifier pass okay uh, this uh, were one microfarad I replaced with 2.2 because that's the smallest value which is available within solid polymers and another 47 microfarad which connects uh, um, a different tape type compensation circuits to the record amplifier all right uh, playback uh, so these four, uh, those are four relays, which are source tape, so those outputs. And these two are final uh, output capacitors, right? Uh, these two are, or I believe it's in the, yeah, it's input capacitors. Those are which from source, uh, RCA connectors from here, and goes through the volume record volume and balance and then go, gets into the input circuit. Okay, so this two, this, uh, this two, then it goes in this direction and goes down to the record head. All right, and playback amplifier to replace it there. And it goes output from playback amplifier uh, here and then and Dolby chip and then to the source tape relay switch. Okay. Now, time to turn it on, tune it up, and listen to the results. See you in a moment. All right, all right. Assemble, tune it. Everything works as it should. Uh, the biggest observation which I found uh, the picking on 20 kilohertz. It like it was uh, peaking after 15, like it was going up. That was I I, I mentioned when I recorded tape on this deck and installed it into other Uh 
my high frequencies were jumping up. That means that it was under bias in about 15 kilohertz. Not under bias. I given um, you, you get me right. Uh, so I had to adjust playback picking uh, resistors, and above 15 kilohertz, it was about like four or five decibel difference. So it started to uh, produce on playback like uh, more high frequencies above 15 kilohertz. All right. And then I tested all range like recording. I had to adjust bias a little bit, and I now it's records flat all tapes like up to 20 kilohertz. Everything is good. And now I, I play tape. So that's, for example, let's install tape I recorded on Sony 555. I just was working on. And it's type one and Dolby C. And high frequency is all there. So you may hear yourself, it plays really, really well now. And, and I hope now it will be 100% compatible on Dolby C. Because Dolby C was one of the issues, like it wasn't compatible with Sony's, right? But uh, on itself, like it was recording and playing really, really well. Now it's compatible. Now it plays Sony uh, Type-C tape really well. Okay, so... Stay tuned, I will record the Sonic demo video. We will be recording a couple songs comparing to Sonic K7. I will do as much test as I can, but all in all, sound became not so bold, but uh, much more extended into the low area, into the bass, and much more extended on the highs. Now I can hear much better. Right, I tested factory tapes, they sound awesome now. So, if you get bored, it's not much work, really, a couple hours. Stay tuned on my channel, subscribe, thanks for your attention, and bye-bye. Hey guys, I'm so much like the sound of the Recap It Nankamichi DR10 that I decided to recap uh, this uh, MB10 player. And it's already plays really great. The only thing you need to recap is two capacitors. And it's uh, done. I'm also increased it from, it was 22 microfarad. I'm increased it to 47 because 47 is the most common uh, capacitor used on all schematics I have seen for CD players on, as an output. All right, now time to listen. Let me move it in and I hope I will be right about the sound quality. See you soon.